Right, back up. I'm going to have the wind behind me now. Which is good because I can do the video. And I can walk along this road. I've driven along it in the past, but I've never, ever walked it. Or I, if I tell a lie, there's a possibility I did walk it. A long time ago, I'm talking about 30 years ago, when I was with the army cadets and we were doing the west, we were doing a big walk anyway, Save the Children Fund. We were walking 22 miles from Weston to, or uphill to Wells, W-E-L. I've got a feeling we did walk along here and then picked up the West Mendip Way over there. Yeah. So, 30 odd years ago, because I, I can vaguely remember all these telegraph poles. We didn't go through the Warren. No, we didn't. And we didn't go up on the top there. Not as far as I know. No, we didn't. I'm sure we didn't. We might have done Velvet Bottom though. But I've got a feeling we walked all the way up this road and there were people waiting at the top here for us. Marshals, to direct us. Yeah, I have done this, but walking up. And I was very fit in those days. I didn't even, well, I don't smoke now, but I didn't smoke then either. And I was just fresh from doing marathon running. So, you know, I could like run up um, Crook's Peak, you know what I mean? I was so fit in those days. I probably class as okay for my age. Um, and I do love doing this, you know. I, I feel quite happy now that I'm on familiar ground. I know where I'm going now and I've got the time to do it in. And I've got this beautiful view. And there's a path over there I sometimes go up when I'm in Robero Warren. I walk that path. I go in those trees. Yeah. I love that cottage as well. I love that down there. Wouldn't it? It's so beautiful. And I'm glad I've been able to get out here because I kept six months is a long time, you know. The change of the seasons. It was October the last time I was over here. October. 2022. My my last big outing was to the Quantox and I had to hitch because the bus didn't come. I had to hitch to Taunton and get my train. I'm hoping that's not going to happen this year because I will be going out there. But anyway, I'm really walking around this great big diversion and uh, there's plenty of space for me to walk if I don't want to get run over. In fact, I might walk on there now. Walk on the side, look. That's what other people do. I'm not overheated and I'm not cold. I'm doing a lovely bit of... Uh, now, on a clear day, you would see out to the Bristol Channel there and in, 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 in certain areas from up there, you can see Steep Home and you can see um, Breen Down like big whales, monsters in the sea. Look, I'm really enjoying this, you know. Look at that lovely cottage down there. My, one of my last walks before was uh, really, really sad, you know. Like that, uh, that last walk, going through Piney Slides. This is what I did. I felt really, really sad. And that's what the 126 bus meant to me and other people because it's now more com it is complicated now because you can't actually get a bus all the way to Cheddar and you have to fiddle around with 16 seaters no well one of them's got a timetable but the, the other one is also ad hoc and I don't like planning too far ahead you book the day before but I want to know is how it's getting me, where are we going? You know, it's going to be driving me all over the place, picking people up outside their houses. You know, it's, it seems to me not a good idea. I don't know if it'll last. I don't know. 
I wish they'd just put the 126 back on, to be quite honest. I really do. I really miss my bus. That was a part of my life. And I am talking about it because it's important to people who don't drive. I can drive. I can't afford a vehicle. That took me outside. Took me out. Now I've got to walk miles to even get here. But I love it. Look at that lovely view. Let me turn off and take Right, we're carrying on down the road. It's all downhill, by the way. All downhill. And we'll go around one bend and we'll pick up the track that takes you into Robert Warren. I can hear a vehicle coming. Oh, it's a motorbike. It takes you into Robert Warren. Normally I'd be walking down through there now. And there would be a way in. And I had to do like a horseshoe bend movement. Oh no, let's make it out the way. Let this big lorry pass. Pass. Let this big lorry go by. I got a feeling I'm not, I'm not as far away as I think. But I don't know. Could be that. Yeah, because I had to do like a loop round like that and then go back. Um, and there was like a junction point somewhere round about there. Yeah, there was a junction point. Yeah, actually I can see the path now weaving. It's down here. It's not too bad actually, she's doing well. But you imagine doing it the other way, coming up this hill. Easier going straight through, isn't it? So we're sheltered now, I'm talking to you all. Just a reminder that King Charles III's got his coronation on the 6th of May and millions, if not billions, are being spent on it. Despite everyone else suffering. But of course I am a bit of a history lover, so it's difficult really knowing it's difficult I'm torn sometimes between it all between the culture and our history and what the reality you know what I mean like there's people really loads, loads of us struggling and they'll be gorging on banquets um, but if you don't have any history and no pageantry and nothing you know, what's it all about? See? Some people are, are losing everything anyway. Look at Ukraine. Having their culture smashed to pieces. Lost people. Lost people. Oh, that's right, it's a jeep. A jeep. Yeah, so I'm fine. I'm doing fine. I haven't looked at the clock again. Not at the moment. Right, turn it off for a minute. Right, just a little tiny video. So we're going down this country lane. This is a campsite. And there's a public footpath. That goes over to Shipham, I believe. I might try that out one day. I might do. Somebody coming up the road with a bag, or it could, they could be somebody who cleans the hedges. There's a great big lorry coming now. So I'm going to get out the way. Great big lorry coming. See someone's had a campfire there. Could even rain, you know. Yeah, somebody, woman, picking up rubbish.
I ought to turn off actually in a minute. Could be a bloke. Not sure actually. Looks more like a woman, I think. Pretty little primroses in there. Oh, there's a little pond, look. A little pond there. That's pretty, isn't it? Little pond. Oh, look at this primulus. Lovely primulus down there. The little pond. I wonder if it's a mermaid one. Oh, they're nice, isn't it? Oh yeah, the Mendip camp. I remember now, yeah. Not very busy this time of year, of course. We've even got a rubber ring now, look. Oh, very nice. Looks clean. Some massive lorries come along here, you know. Anyway, what's going on in the world? Oh, yeah. um, the war in Ukraine is still as crazy as ever, with Putin even visiting some battlefields, apparently, today, they said, on the 18th of April 2023. It's been a year. It's been a year. It's been a year since um, the war started and I don't really know what's going to happen. He seems very, very confident, Putin, and I think he's... I'm not quite sure if, uh, how it's all working. Apparently the Russians are going to be allowed to play tennis this year um, at Wimbledon. Because sport is supposed to be neutral. I don't know what to make of any of it, and, and if all I know, he shouldn't really have attacked these people uh, in the way he's done, because he's just killing innocent people. And it, it, it's a type of genocide, isn't it? It's what it comes across like. So much hate, it's awful, isn't it? Who wants to get, he's got this colonial head on. Emperor head. Now, some people, they lock them up for life over in Russia, if you speak out. They've always been brutal in that way. You hear about it, don't you? Being sent out to the gulags in the Siberian freezing conditions. Some, it's cruelty, isn't it, really? When we're trying to save our planet and everything. Now, in the next... Half an hour, the roads will start filling up with the busy mums and grandmothers going, and dads I suppose, going to pick up their children from the schools. Um, like I said, the farmers' wives with their big 4 by 4s will be hurtling down these roads soon. Now, by the time that all kicks off, I should be crossing the busy Shipham Cheddar Road and getting on to the quiet, peaceful wander down the West Mendip Way, folks. That's the plan. And I will be walking parallel with the Callow Drove that I walked earlier this today. I've been on, I would have been on one big sweep by the time I get back to Winscombe. And it's hilly, whichever way you go, but I would say I've chose the right direction, really. You've got that initial hill coming out of Winscombe. Then you've got the Callow Drove, which is relatively flat. Then you go downhill, skirting the quarry to reach the Cheddar Road. 
shed at Shipham Road, and then you have then there is a climb again. You have to climb up the other side. But it's a pleasant walk. There were no I was lucky there were cows, but they were far away. And I was able to walk my little walk in areas that I'm so familiar with, like Tinian's farm area, views of the beautiful Robert Warren. And uh, that, that was nice, I enjoyed that. Another car coming. Yeah, I really enjoyed that actually. Yeah, so there it goes, that's probably one now, making their way down. <clears throat> I expect to see a lot of cars in a minute, but like I said, we're not, we're not far to go, we'll be down the bottom in a minute. But I'm expecting to see a lot of vehicles now. These trucks here, for example, looks nice, isn't it? There's a little tiny bungalow up there. Rangali House. Yeah, and there's a little calf there. Hello, how you doing? You just been born. Not my one, it's that. Give your mum. You're lucky. You've got a whole field to yourself. Yeah. Well then, they've cut a lot of trees down along here. They can't all be ash die back, can they? Now that ain't the bungalow, she, now that's just the garage, darling. Oh, right. There's the wooden house that they live in. This could all be new. Some people do build there. I've got a nephew who's, who's been planning to build his own house. Um, I don't know if he'll ever get round to that. But it's nice to see how others live, isn't it? The sort of place I'd love out here. Nice, look, lovely gardens. How the other? And they've probably worked hard for all that, you see. I did work hard, but I didn't get the re financial rewards as a nurse. Did it? <laughs> I fully empathise with the nurses and the doctors. They really don't thing is, they're almost blackmailed by governments, really, because they know that people care. They're, if you go into that profession, you're usually a caring person. And they play on that. And they play on the guilt. And all that of nurses letting people suffer and all that, you know? Which, what it is, it's the system that's rotting. The nurses are sticking up for the system, not just their pay. Anyway, that's, that's one thing. They're, they have been on strike, you see, the doctors and the nurses of Royal College of Nursing, which I was surprised at because they never used to really think about striking. They've already had a couple of strikes and they're going to strike again. The government have refused to acknowledge their requests. And um, so they've said they're going to start striking over the well when the king's coronation's on <laughs> so that's going on uh, Musk's rocket, the biggest rocket to be sent up has had to be postponed for a couple more days due to some sort of problem it's only orbiting around the earth but it's it's got to do all that sort of thing it's a big rocket apparently it's, it's supposed to be big built to take people to Mars or things like that or deeper into space with people on it and they were going to launch it to practice with it but uh, they've got to get it right and it wasn't right so they cancelled now Virgin Branson he's I think he's either gone bankrupt with his space thing or it's up for sale Or it's up for sale. I reckon I'll be tired tomorrow, but I've really enjoyed the walk and I've really needed it. Um, I've done some really good lung exercises doing the hills today. 
The rib cage has been really working. I, I, am, uh, I had more indigestion than anything to do with the breathing, to be quite honest. <sighs> That's the problem. But I, uh, I don't like going out on an empty stomach. But I only had a yogurt and a small pancake. But uh, it doesn't take much. Now, and, and I didn't have my cheese and tomato to what till I was going downhill back there. I decided I was. That's my lunch: cheese and tomato. I've had a Galaxy bar. I've got an oat bar. I've got an orange. I've got a packet of crisps. I've had my banana. Um, yeah, I always carry enough for what I call a day's worth of food, so that you don't starve. And like I said, if I do get back early and the chip shop's open, I might buy myself a Savloy and eat that while I'm waiting. I can see some Moo Moo's right up the top there. Yeah, there's loads up there. And calves. Ooh. And calves as well. Yeah. What's that? Oh, one of those. Yeah, there's no panic because it's not three o'clock yet and I'm getting the six o'clock. There's no way I could get the four o'clock one now. But it's not just that. It's the fact that I could get a five o'clock one and they don't put one on. Do you know, I mean, the six o'clock one, even with the the cheddar one, I rarely got the last bus. Now I'm having to, because there's so many gaps with this one. They have three hour gaps between buses. And then a two hour gap. Over that.